Well, are we here? Are we here, all people? Do you hear me? Um, that's a legitimate question. I don't know if it's working. Oh, I think it is. Well, how are we doing, everybody? Welcome to this live tutorial. This is my second live tutorial, by the way. Live tutorials are slightly different from ordinary ones because I don't have any notes. So uh, I don't have any preparation materials at all, actually. I'm just doing this 100% live. And um, I don't know if this is a better way of doing tutorials. I would be super grateful if you could let me know in the comment, do you prefer live tutorials like this? Or do you prefer nicely prepared tutorials like usual? Anyway, I'd love to know. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to build or how to work with before hooks and after hooks. Now, this is another part of the Trongate API manager. And you remember that last time we did a tutorial where we looked at how to work with the Trongate API manager. And I was showing you how the different endpoints work and how to get data and all of that stuff. Well, it turns out that before hooks and after hooks is a really important part of the API manager. Uh, but it's really easy as well. And the cool thing is that when you finish this one, you'll be able to talk to your friends about middleware. And they'll all think that you're a genius. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, there's certain phrases that appear in web development from time to time. People get really excited about them. Dependency injection was one. Middleware's another. So you can, you know, dazzle people and tell them that you know about all of that stuff. Anyway, enough of my waffling. Shall we dance? Yes, we shall. So I'm going to start this one off by just reminding you that I'll be using the Trongate desktop app. It's available from trongate.io forward slash download. Also, just to let you know, I have XAMPP up and running and you can download XAMPP for any of the major operating systems free of charge, okay? So let me start this one off by opening up the Trongate desktop app. Okay. So here we go, and I am going to do another uh, very, very simple, let's just say, task manager again, okay? So I'll call this one um, before, uh, well, how about if we just call it API Hooks? That'll be the name of the, the app, right? API Hooks. Now you can call your app anything you want but that's what I'm going to call it, okay? API hooks. So here's the base URL. Here's the database connection details. I'm going to choose a location, and for me, it's htdocs, and here we go. So it's getting Trongate from GitHub. It's doing all the configuration, and here we are. Now, just like we did in the last tutorial, we'll do the most basic example possible. Let's create a new module. So again, I am going to make this a task manager again. I know it's easy, but I want it to be easy, right? So I'm not going to have an icon or anything like that. And we're just going to have two properties. We'll have a title, so a task title. And we'll have a Boolean for complete. Or let's call it finished, just like last time, okay? So that's our form. You can change the values if you want, but I am happy. Let me make sure the screen's on. I think it is. Okay, so we'll leave out the URL column. Actually, will we keep in the URL column this time? Yeah, you know what? Let's use the URL column. We will have a URL column for title. Ah ha And let's order by ID ascending. So it's a little bit different from last time. So here we are, here's our app, there's no surprises, and I'm gonna create three tasks just to get started. So I'll say task one, we will say task two, and let's say task three. And to make life interesting, we'll say that this is finished, okay? So there you go, 
and we've just made three tasks, okay? Now, if you want, you can head to the database, have a little look, and you'll find that our API hooks database is here, and here is our tasks table. Okay. Now, we are going to be dealing with the API Explorer. And if you never followed along with the last tutorial that I posted on this, I do hope that you'll check it out. Uh, it just covered the basics of what all of this stuff is and everything like that, you know? And I'm going to actually... To save time, I'm not going to build a page or anything this time because that's all been covered before. So let's just save time and we're going to turn our attention to this create endpoint here. So you'll remember, and again, this is all pretty much covered in the last video, that we can, well, first of all, we have to enable this, right? So let me open up the endpoint thing. I'm going to go to uh, applications. Where on earth is it? It's applications, ZAMP, HT Docs, and it's API hooks. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go into modules, tasks, assets, API.json, and I'm going to go to the create endpoint, which is down here. Here it is here. So on this create endpoint, if I go like this just now, you'll see that it says endpoint not activated since no authorization rules have been declared. So we're going to activate this endpoint. Let's just say authorization and we're going to have it wide open. Okay, save. And there you go. Now, I'm going to assume that you know how to submit requests to the endpoints using JavaScript, for example. I'm going to make that assumption. If you don't know how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description that takes you back to the previous tutorial. That being said, let's bring this one to life. So you can see that we've got this uh, title. You can see that we've got finished. Now, for the title, I'm just going to say, here we go. And for finished, I'm going to say one. So let's submit this task record. And there's absolutely no surprises. As you can see, our response comes back and it's a JSON representation of what's on the database table. You can see that we've got an ID of four, for example. And sure enough, that corresponds perfectly with everything we've got on our table here. Now, let's make life a little bit interesting. Do you see how that URL title there is empty? I'm going to go into this create thing and I'm going to do a little comma and I'm going to say before hook and the idea is that before the record is inserted into the database we're going to do some stuff. Now I'm going to call this one underscore pre-insert, pre-insert, okay? So before we do the insert, we're going to do some stuff, right? Now I've added an underscore here because I don't want, I'm going to make a function up, but I don't want it to be accessible via the URL. That's why I'm doing an underscore, okay? So let's open up controllers, tasks, and we're going to go right here. We're going to say function pre-insert, and I'm just going to echo hello with a die statement. And I'll zoom you in, okay? So it doesn't get much easier than that, folks. Now save that. Let's go back to the API Explorer. And we'll just submit. And as you can see, it says hello. And the thing has stopped. So this has intercepted the inbound request. And in this case, we've just said, right, hello, stop what you're doing. And there it is. Now, as cool as that is, it's nothing compared to the coolness of what's going to come up next. You see, when you define a before hook using the Trongate API manager like this, you have access to a thing called input. That automatically gets passed in. And in fact, 
If I just say var dump input, we'll get rid of the hello. I'm going to save and submit. As you can see, we have an array that is being passed in. And it has a whole bunch of stuff. You can see we've got a token, we've got a module name, we've got an endpoint name. And then we've got some parameters. Do you see how it says that? Params. And the parameters are expressed as an array. So all of that's going on without us even knowing this. So check this out. I'm going to say, let's extract the submitted title. Okay, so I'll do a comment. Get the submitted task title. So how do we do that? Well, we could say that the title is input params title. Now, I'm going to echo title with a die statement. Okay. And if we do that, you can see again, I'll zoom you in. Do you see how it says, here we go? So we have now got the title. Okay. Now, I'm going to create a URL string from the title. How would we do that? Well, remember, in our database, we have a column called URL string. It's not doing much just now, but we can say URL string equals, and it just so happens there's a little method or a function even inside the TronGate framework. It's called URL title. So if I say URL title title, and now I'm going to echo this URL string onto the page with a die statement. You know what's going to happen. That's right. As you can see, it says, here we go. And it has actually removed dangerous characters. If I say, here we go, with an exclamation mark and maybe a comma, and I submit, you can see that it cleans it up. So it's removing all of those dangerous characters and turning it into a string that we could easily add to a URL. So now, what we're going to do? We're going to add the URL string to the input array. How do we do that? We say input params, and we're going to say URL title. Oh, pardon me. Let me get this right. It's URL string. So URL string equals URL string. Now, if you want to save a line of code, you can just put this here if you want, but I'll spread it out like this because, you know, I want, want this to be clear, right? So, we have just taken in this input array, but now we have modified the array. The final thing that we're going to do is we're going to return the modified input array. So we're simply going to say return input. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about a before hook. So a before hook takes in a bunch of stuff. It might do some changes and then it returns the bunch of stuff. So let me demonstrate this. We'll have a little refresh for good luck. I'm going to click on create. I'm going to do that. Now, I'll just leave out URL string. It doesn't even matter. And I'm going to just, in fact, even if I take it out, it won't matter. And for the title, I'm going to say, wow, this is super. I'll do a comma. Cool. And I'll say finished as one. Now, you'll agree that that's a kind of awkward title. There's problematic characters there. But if we submit, as you can see, the URL string is now perfect. It's been cleaned up. Everything is cool. And if we head over and browse the database, look at the nice URL string. Now, the reason why that matters, of course, is because it's very easy for us to then go something like so. We could, for example, build a thing that reads the URL string, we could say record object is this model get one 
square and we could read where the URL string is the URL string like that. Now I'm going to just super quickly show you this. So if I take this one here, here's our URL string. And I'm going to super quickly take you to API hooks tasks forward slash display forward slash the URL string. And look, you can see that we've now fetched the data and we've got a super nice URL string, which is pretty cool. So from here, we could say, for example, and you don't need to follow along, but just this is me just showing off here, you know. So I could just say something like data view file is display task. And then I could just load up a template. I'll load up the public template, pass in the data. You don't need to follow along with this part. It's just me demonstrating how you could potentially uh, work with something like this. So if I say display task.php, you can see that we've now got this. And then we can just say something like task details. And then in here, well, you've got everything you want. Task title, that would be the title. You get the idea. And then finished and so on. Okay, something like that. Now that's going to give us a one or a zero. And of course, we would make that look nice. But you get the idea. Nice URL, intercepting the in inbound data, changing it, and then returning the modified inbound data. That is a before hook. And by the way, that is, to use the fancy phrase, middleware. So now you know. So it just jumps in front of the thing, does some stuff, and gets out of the way. So congratulations, that is a before hook. Do we have anyone here? We do. Hello, message retracted. Let's have a look. Let me guess. You like Laravel? Something like that. Anyway, Carl is here. How are you doing, Carl? I'm not able to click this. Um, I am programmer in the house. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. And I appreciate all of the likes, folks. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so that is before hooks. And I hope that that's cool. If there's any questions, do let me know. Now we're going to look at after hooks. So an after hook. You know how like a before hook jumps in before it does its thing? An after hook jumps in after it has finished. So let me give you an example of how this might work. Um, let's imagine, in fact, we'll go in to our database here, right? And here's our tasks database. Now, I'm going to manually add two columns onto this, okay? So let's see here. How do we do this? It's structure. And we're going to add two columns, right? All right, now the first column is going to be called date underscore created. It's going to be an integer and we'll give it a default value of zero. Then we're going to have last updated. That's also going to be an integer with a default value of zero. Now, because we've given those default values, all of the records have got these values of zero going on. So, Here's a question. How do you think we set the date created when we do an insert here? That's right, folks. We just go like this. Set the date created. Now I'm going with a Unix timestamp. So I'm simply going to say input params date created equals time. That's going to give us a Unix timestamp there. So let's just quickly try this. There should not be any difficulties with this at all. And I'll just say, here we go again. And we're going to just submit. And you can see that date created has now been added. That's our before hook here. 
Okay, that is the before hook doing its thing. Now, let's imagine that we wanted a thing on the update endpoint so that when it gets updated, we're going to change the last updated value. So how do we do that? Well, back to the api.json file here. And on this update thing, I'm going to just go like this. Now we'll have a before hook again. This is on update. And this one is going to be called pre-update. So before we update, we're going to do this. And before we forget, let's also add in our authorization, which will keep wide open for the moment. Okay, so we're going to make a little function that does stuff before we do an update. So save this, head over to here, and we're going to go function pre-update. Now, exactly the same story, we're taking in an input, yes, it's a before hook, but this is stuff that we're going to do before we do an update. Okay, so we can actually do the same vibe as before with regards to this stuff here. So this is us just sorting out the URL string. But the next thing we can do is we can say set the date or what was it called? Last updated value. So we would simply say input params. I'm going to say last updated equals time. And then just like before, remember with a before hook, you take in an input array and you return the input array. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. If I just show you the tasks kind of normally, you can see that we've got, wow, this is super cool. Now I'm going to go into that and you can see that it's got a record of five, right? So let's go into our update endpoint here. I'm on the API Explorer page. I'm going to click into update. And right at the top here, I'm going to put in the ID of 5 and I'm going to click here. Now, we don't even need to add all of this stuff in. I'm just going to have a title that gets submitted, okay, or a title and a finished value. How about that? And I'm going to say, this is amazing. That's my new title. And I'll say that finished is 1. So this is the update endpoint, okay? I'm going to submit. As you can see, everything looks fantasticola. And now, of course, the URL sorted, the title. But look at this. The last updated field is also working. So if we do this one here, we go again or whatever. I'm going to go to 6. So that's the idea of 6. Here I go again on my own. I'm going to submit. There it is. And if we browse, now you can see we've got our date created and our last updated. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, let's look at this here I go again on my own thing. Um... And I'm going to take us back to the page which was called Tasks Display. Now, you may or may not have built this page. If you did, follow along. If not, you can just watch and listen to the friendly voice. But um, on a page like this, okay, we're actually using PHP, so we definitely don't need to do much with this page. But imagine a page like this reading from an endpoint. How would that work? Well, you see that the ID is 6. So we could do something like find 1. And now I should probably open this thing up. So I'm going to look for it. Can you see find 1? There it is there. So I'm going to add in authorization all. Okay, so that's opening it up. And I'm going to put in an ID of 6. Check it out. And 
here is our response, okay? So the server's saying, yep, here's all of the details, here's the last updated, and all of that. Now, as good as that is, it does not look so good, especially the date created and the last updated. And on a page like this, it would look positively hideous. So what we are going to do is, just before we present the data, we're going to jump in, intercept this, and we're going to make the date created and the last updated look nice. So here's how we do this. On find one, we're going to say comma. Uh, actually, this is an after hook. So after hook. So after you've done your thing, and let's call this one prep record. So we're just going to prepare the record. Now you can call it anything you want. I'm making up these names as I go along. But let's just save this. We'll head to the top of the tasks controller. We're going to say function prep record. Now, again, we can echo, hi, a little old die statement. And if we submit, you can see that it says hi. And by the way, we can change the response code by saying HTTP response code. And you can change it to anything you want. See how I've just changed it to 401? That's how you do that, okay? Now, what we are going to do is we're going to get that ugly looking last updated and date created. And we're going to make it look nice. So, do you know how the before hook took in an input? The after hook takes in an output, okay? This is how after hooks work. We take in an output. Now, we can var dump this output. There's nothing mysterious going on here. It's quite reasonable to have a look at it. And there it is. Once again, it's an array. It's slightly different from the last one. This time you can see we've got our token, a body, and we've got a code that represents the HTTP response code there, the 200. But all of the action for us is inside this body area here. And you can see that that's a string, and it's in JSON format. So, what we're going to do then is... We are going to fetch the response body. So, how do we do that? Well, we can say response body is output body. And we know that that's a string. If we var dump response body, you'll see that it's going to say string. See, it's a big old string. So, what we can then do is turn that into an actual response. So, we could say a response, is it an object? It's an object. So, we could say that response object is JSON decode response body. Now, again, this time I'll var dump response object. And as you can see, this is now an object. See that? So what we're going to do? Well, to access, let's do date created, right? So we could say that date created is response object loading up date created. And to prove that I've got access to this and we do have control, I'm going to echo date created with a little old die statement and uh, just a typo. Here we go. Undefined. Oh, pardon me. It's response. <laughs> it's, uh, I should have called it record object, actually. That would have been a better name. I'll go with response object. Anyway, here we go. So there it is, right? Do you see how we've now got our date created coming in here? Okay. So let's make the date created nice. How do we do that? 
Well, we can say nice date created equals and I'm going to use, oh gee, how is it we do this again? It's the date function. And I'm going to say something like Monday, the, so it's L, J, S, F, Y. And uh, I'll pass in date created. Okay, so now I'm going to echo nice date created with a die statement. And as you can see, this is now nice. And I could format this any way I want. I could add hours and minutes in and all of that stuff, like that, it's very easy. That's 24 hour clock I'm using there. You can present the date any way you want, but I'll just go with this, I'll keep it nice and simple, okay? So hopefully you'll agree that that is a nice date created there. And that's kinda cool. Next, let's make the last updated nice, okay? So make the last updated nice. So with this one, we'll do it with one line of code just to be ninjas, right? So I'll say nice last updated. So that is again the date function. We'll do the same thing, L, J, S, F, Y. And this time, you know what? Let's do it with one line of code. So how about response object loading up last updated. So now I'm going to echo nice last updated and again it's giving us this. We can add in a little bit more information at I'll say H I and there you go. By the way if you're wondering how I remember this I have a tutorial on YouTube and I, it takes 15 minutes. You go through it one time and you'll never have to look up dates again. I can actually teach you how to remember this stuff. It's really easy. Um, maybe I should leave a link to that as well. Anyway, hopefully you'll agree that we've now got a nice date created and a nice last updated. So what do we do now? Well, we're going to say, let's add the nice dates back onto the output uh, array, because it's an array, right? So how do we do that? Well, we're going to say response object, and we're talking about a property, I, I say the word loading up here, or assigned to, right? So the response object date created is now going to be equal to nice date created, and the response object last updated, that is going to be the nice last updated, ah ha So we've now modified this response object. One more step, what do we need to do? That's right, we are now going to say the output body, we have to turn it back into a string, so it's JSON and code, response object. And finally, you know what's coming up next? We return the output. There you go. So let's save it. Let's give this one a try. Submit. Array key intersect must be of type array null given. Oh gee. Standard endpoints on line 6669. That's okay. That's okay. I'm fine. I don't know. What are you saying? <laughs> All right, I'm going to use my highly scientific patent pending check technique here. Here we go. So that's cool. Check one little old die statement. And uh, this check two is cool. Little old die statement here. Um. Oh, do you know what it is? It's, uh, I'll just show you. If we JSON this output here, it's all right. You'll see that we had it called body. So output, body. One moment. 
var dumb output. Okay, it's an array. So output body is right. Give me just a minute here. Oh, do you know what? I forgot to say the word return. <laughs> the code was good. The code was good, folks. I just forgot to say the word return. Okay, that was today's deliberate mistake of the day. Congratulations if you spotted that. So as you can see now, we are bringing the data back, but before we present it to the user, it's being modified so that date created and last updated looks nice. Remember folks, if we did not have this here, then it would be returning this. See how it just doesn't look quite as good. So there's our after hook and don't it make you feel good. That's pretty much all there is to say, believe it or not. And you can use these before hooks and after hooks for anything that you like. So for example, let's say you've got a members website or something like that, or an online shop or something. You could have an after hook that sends a confirmation email maybe uh, when somebody joins or buys a product, something like that, you know. So you can really do anything you want with this stuff. And the only limits are the limits of your imagination. So anyway, I think that's going to be us for this one. I hope that um, this was useful. We have a few of the gang in town here. We have the great DAFA in full formation. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Michael Levitt's here. How you doing, Michael? Nice to see you. It's a hi to you. And then we have Apna College Dost says, I think this video is very, very precious. Well, thank you. I think you're very precious. You all are. We all are. And I really want to thank you for being here. I think that's the end of the tutorial. So, um, has anybody got any questions or anything or any comments? Is there anything that's unclear? Iron Man, how you doing? And you're looking good. I think that that might be our friend Ed, you know. How, you, how on earth are you doing, you crazy rock and roller? And where have you been? It's nice to see you. Um, anyways, everything okay with that? Can we handle the vibe? Good. I think um, before I go, shall we... I don't know if I should talk about this, but I had... Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. I had a wee, ev once every two or three months, I have a, <laughs> I have a wee look online to see what people are saying about Trongate. And it's always quite interesting, you know, um, because whenever you see people saying something neg negative about this framework, they always seem to be either jealous Laravel developers who cannot come to terms with the fact that we've got a faster and frankly better framework. Or it's from these radical woke whack jobs who for reasons that I don't understand uh, don't like Trongate. Who knows why? I mean, I'm super woke, as you know. You might as well refer to me as they, actually. I'm that woke, you know. But... Uh, I thought maybe we could have a little bit of fun and have a, before I go, I mean the tutorial's finished, but if you have a look on Google, maybe we can do this together and I'll show you what I mean, okay? So if we have a look, um, Trongate is the new PHP framework for developers. Okay, here we go. So I did this last night and this came up. So. Dusk Wolf says that there are several huge red flags. Delib deliberately rejects industry standards. Not written in idiomatic modern PHP. Doesn't use namespaces or strict types, or indeed any types at all. Uh, contains no inline documentation, but does contain a substantial amount of inline HTML. Now that's all garbage. Complete garbage. I mean, it's, it's just clutching at straws. 
and then it talks about structural problems. Now, there's, I have a prediction that there's not going to be any detail here. The obvious being that the model class isn't actually a model base class, it's a database abstraction layer, which only supports trivial CRUD queries. Let's talk about trivial CRUD queries. Um, so if I go open query builder, and uh, if I go like this, and this, and this, and this, and then if I say, okay, let's have a TronGate user ID assigned to a token, let's have a TronGate user assigned to a user level, and let's have a comment assigned to a user ID, and let's get the SQL, oh, it didn't select any table columns, okay, so we can do something like that, and that, whatever, um, and then we can get our SQL like this, and then we can go into our model file. And uh, it's very easy for us to do things like query binding, to securely do custom queries, or just a straight query function as well. Which part of simple CRUD is that? How about batch inserts? We've got a whole bunch. I mean, everything that you could ever want to do with a database is here. And yet, we have these clowns saying only supports trivial CRUD queries. The only trivial crud that I'm seeing is this chancer. That's the only trivial crud that I'm seeing. And then the developer often, right, so so far we've got nothing. And then I only focus on GitHub stars. That reminds me, if you like using TronGate, give us a star on GitHub. If this framework gets to a thousand stars, it will be the most, the most electrifying moment in the history of PHP. If you have not given TronGate a star on GitHub, please give TronGate a star on GitHub. I mean, there's no point in you being here or me being here if nobody's going to do this. Anyway, here's what I wanted to show you. Here's Here's what I wanted to show you. You say to yourself, okay, this person says a few fancy things. What shall we say about Dusk Waff? What do you reckon, folks? Well, how about if we do a search for Laravel, Dusk Waff? And sure enough, we'll show only results with his name. And there he is participating fully in or among the Laravel community. He's a Laravel developer and uh, quite an active one by the looks of things. So I want to say to you folks watching, to everybody watching this video, you're gonna see people like that from time to time showing up, talking, crap. But you're never gonna see them talk to me live. You're never gonna see them debate me in person. I've done tons of live streams and everything. They're never here. You're never gonna see it. So I want all of you to cling on to the words I'm saying. If you find somebody on the web bad-mouthing this framework, they are either a malicious, jealous Laravel developer like this character or they are another type of negative character and let's see if we can find any examples of those, shall we? So, if we take a look at, uh, let's see what else we've got. Trongate framework again, again. I hope you're watching the screen. Let's see who else has something negative to say. 
A petty rant, I don't like how Trongate is bashing Laravel. Well, at least he's straight up about it. Another one that I saw, um, the Trongate, uh, okay, that's actually a, a good one. We do have some positive things. Um, it's Here's another one that I saw. I think it was this one. And uh, what we got here? Um, relatively new, not a large, so a few places where you can find information. No, actually, that's, <laughs> I've not seen that before. We do have some good stuff out there. But um, there was one that I saw last night that I really wanted to show you folks. Um, look at this, Laravel is the best suited. And it just goes on and on. Maybe I shouldn't even do this. Oh, this is a joke, right? Mastodon. Mastodon. Oh, this is a joke. So this is Matt Brunt. Do any of you know who Matt Brunt is? Oh, this is a joke. This is a comment, right? It's a joke. Framework's a joke. It's all a joke, ladies and gentlemen. It's all a joke. Okay. Fair enough. So that looks like Matt Brunt Brunty. Yeah. It's an unusual name. I don't know who Matt Brunt is, but let's find out. Brunty. Hi, here he is. Developer and problem solver. Interesting. So immediately, I'm Brunty. The first thing that he wants you to know about him is that it's a he, him. Of all the things, that's what he considers to be front and centre. You know, I'm going to put on my profile, I'm David Connolly, I like women's sports. Because one thing that I'm sick of is this monopoly on the side of good. So he's got he, him. Now what else have we got here? I told you. Give me a moment. Hello, you are live. I'm very good. Is everything okay? Right, okay, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Okay, I'll see you then, okay? Jerry on out, bye. Okay, so you can see that he's on um, Mastodon. You can see that he's into Agile. And uh, look at this message here that I discovered. <laughs> it says, uh, to any, and I'll just get it from the search results, to any trans friends and any trans people around the world, I'm sorry so many places are trying to erase you. Now, that's fantastic. God bless anyone who wishes to help the afflicted. But ladies and gentlemen, can you not see a pattern here? All of the naysayers are either radical wokists or jealous, malicious Laravel developers who cannot come to terms with the fact that there is a faster and better framework. I want you to remember that because I won't always be here to respond to this garbage. You cling on to the words I've given you here when you see these jokers coming out of the woodwork. I mean, that first one, it had the pre all of the pretense of a serious technical comment. And you dig a little bit deeper and it has nothing. Anyway, let me read a couple of the comments and then I'll go. If you have any comments or questions, please submit them quickly. I have to head out shortly. I'm going to have to get ready. Um, 
Matt, uh, Michael, pardon me, says, I've honestly stopped arguing with school leavers about programming. People will outright tell me tech is bad because they don't like their, their political opinions of the person that made it. It's insanity. I, I mean, it's utterly insane. Um, never heard of that. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to read that, out, but thank you very much indeed. Um, you know, I think that the other thing I'll say just before I go as well, because it's sometimes nice to chat like this, is that, um, see when people say something like uh, PHP is bad, or TronGate is bad, or Agile is good or bad, or anything like that, insert thing, right? And then they add an opinion. Those statements are literally meaningless unless you can attach measurable variables onto the statements. So, I mean, again, it's the reason why none of them will debate me. You'll never see any of them come on and debate me. As soon as you show up and call them out, they run away like, like lobsters at the bottom of the sea with ragged claws. They scuttle away. And remember this, because see when you see somebody saying something like, yeah, I don't like Tron Gate because blah, 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 blah. It's all bullshit. The only things that count, ladies and gentlemen, we know the things. Is it modular? Check. Is it more modular than any other? Is it stable? We are V1 forever, baby. Oh, yeah. Does it have simple syntax? Well, it's based on CodeIgniter 3, which is meant to be the most simple of all the PHP frameworks, but we have less syntax, less characters. We made it even more simple than CodeIgniter. Is it fast? Oh, hallelujah. We are whooping all of them. Even Falcon, even the micros, we're blowing them all away. Does it have innovation? Best API manager? Unique? Truly modular architecture. The only framework on earth that gives you a free graphical query builder. Completely unique update mechanism. I could go on and on and on. No third party libraries. We've got our own JavaScript, our own CSS and everything. If you like using other stuff, fantastic. But the point is, unlike other frameworks, we are not tethered to somebody else's rewrite schedule. Do you understand that, people? If you do, I would be very grateful if somebody could type ahoy, because I think this is really important. I'm tired of people going blah, 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 blah. On all of the metrics, speed, footprint size, stability, syntax, third-party dependency, you name it, I think we can have a variable called modularity. We can certainly have a variable called innovation. On all of these things, we are whooping the competition. Whooping the competition. And remember it, when you go around the search engines and you see these little weirdos appearing, these little woke, malicious weirdos, who would not dare join me on a live stream? Okay, now if I haven't got a star, I'm going to start crying like a baby. I don't have a star. Well, I guess that was a waste of time. <sighs> anyway, I had something else. I wanted to say one other thing while I'm here. Um, what else did I want to say? Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that I had underestimated. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. God bless you, Michael and uh, Daffa there. Yeah, I had underestimated the amount of malicious bullshit that I would run into with this framework. I really never thought it would be like this, you know? And I've had people come after me in all sorts of ways, uh, and it's been unreal. But I'm going to just keep on using the darn thing. 
And at the end of the day, I know that I can build PHP applications better than any of those jokers with their here today and gone tomorrow frameworks. I think um, it's not all, you know, Mr. Perfect here. I think that the learning zone needs to get improved and probably the documentation. And I'm going to focus on that a little bit. But as far as everything else goes, we are tip top. Do not listen to anybody who tells you that this framework's not secure or some other bullshit. We have had the data authenticated. We've had some of the best people in the world look at this framework. Take it from me. I'm not going to be the guy who says it's impossible to hack. I'm never going to be that guy with my steel comb. I'm not going to be that guy. But we have certainly looked into all of this in great detail and we are 50 steps ahead of the rest of the herd. So, I hope that you found this useful. I want to thank you all for showing up. It's starting to get a bit dark in here. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. And remember, folks, always code with a smile.